Before I begin, I want to thank everyone who donated to my PayPal account, which can be found in the description down below. Unfortunately, because it's a business account, PayPal doesn't permit me to send any messages like thank you. So I want to thank you all now. Today, I want to discuss the latest Genovese family case, which involves Anthony Romanello, who everyone calls Ron, a West Side captain of a Queens crew, and Joe Celso. In and around 2008-2009, I worked with Celso on an MTA job on Newkirk Avenue in Brooklyn. At the time, he was a 731 shop steward. We didn't have many conversations, but during one, he mentioned how people would never know who his friend is because he wears a chef jacket at his restaurant. Basically, he wanted me to know that he was around the West Side. He was an associate back then, and now he's a member of Rom's crew. They're both indicted for two counts of extortion, and Celso is also charged with obstruction of justice for trying to influence witness testimony. The case stems from the collection of gambling debts. Genovese family associate, and forgive me if I mispronounce these Albanian names, Luan Behidi, who attempted collecting 6000 and another 80000 which was going to Mike Regan, a Genovese bookmaker and also an associate. On a side note, Behidi already pled guilty to extortion in this case. As for the old money, it was gambled by the nephew of a restaurant owner, Bruno Selimash, and the nephew's brother-in-law. Collecting the money apparently became an issue, and this is where Romanello gets involved, or shall I say, this is where his lack of judgment takes place. Romanello and Celso made several visits to Salamage's Lincoln Square Steak Restaurant, where Romanello declared, I don't care who owes it, I want all my money. This was after Salamage explained that he paid a 6000 his nephew owed, but not the 80000 On May 11, 2017, at the Lincoln Square, the situation came to a head. Romanello was in a restaurant with Celso and Reagan, and he demanded his money. At one point, Reagan grabs Salamage by the suit jacket and threatens him. Romanello then tells Selimaj that he'd like to punch him, and he winds up doing just that. The following video shows the incident as it unfolded. That's the bookie Mike Reagan in the black leather jacket putting his drink on the bar. Romanello can be seen walking over with Salamaj. Reagan, Romanelli, and Salamaj are talking, and Reagan grabs Salamaj by his suit jacket, and Romanello clocks him, as can be seen. This was in the heat of the moment and not something planned, but more importantly, not an ideal situation for a captain to put himself in. This is why a captain has a crew, and this is also the second incident where a captain is acting out of character, the other one being Jolani with the restaurant and gas station incident. A person with a captain's position should utilize his crew and associates and attempt to insulate himself as much as possible. What Romanello has going against him is his less than competent lawyer told the Brooklyn jury that the reason his client got involved was his long-standing relationship with the Albanian community. An extremely weak argument, if you ask me. If Romanello was there because he got along with the Albanians, he'd be using diplomacy, not violence. His lawyer then claimed that Selimaj told his client he was a washed-up Italian and that he had no balls, was nothing, and had no guts to punch him. If this was true, understandably, Romanello can't let him get away with speaking to him like that, but there's a time and place for everything. Romanello's lawyer also told the jury that people who viewed the tape said his client punches like a girl. The problem with that statement is any juror with a half a brain has to say to himself, it doesn't matter if he punched like a girl or Mike Tyson, he shouldn't be putting his hands on anyone. The lawyer further stated this punch was six and a half years ago. A punch is a punch no matter how many years it is. This case is a good example of what the mob will do to collect a gambling debt. If you think about it, Selimaj didn't place any bets. His nephew and the nephew's brother-in-law did. But because the bookmakers couldn't collect their money, they got the cruise captain involved, who goes to the uncle who owns a restaurant, to force him to make good on the money. When he agrees to pay the nephew's losses of 6000 that's not good enough. They want him to pay the 80000 that the brother-in-law lost as well. Definitely a recipe for disaster. By the way, the 80000 was paid by Selimaj's brother Nino, who owns the infamous restaurant Nino's in Manhattan. I used to be in the gambling business, and I never personally got involved in paying or collecting money with customers. We never had any issues. But in all fairness, if a customer wins, he gets paid. And if he loses, he also needs to pay. 
You could believe if the nephew's brother-in-law had won the 80,000, he'd have his hand out. And he should have put that same hand in his pocket when he lost. This is also a perfect example of why you need to profile your customers. If you know a guy can't afford to pay over a certain limit, you cut him off before his losses get out of hand. I'll guarantee the brother-in-law didn't even make 80000 a year, yet they continued to let him bet. By profiling your customers, you know their limit and when they reach it, and you shut them down until they pay what they owe. And then after that, they could gamble with you again. Soon we're going into 2024. You don't have to be a wise guy to know that there's cameras everywhere. What's comical is, after Romanello clocks Selimaj, and Selimaj tells him that there's security cameras, it's at that point that Romanello tells Reagan, let's get out of here. It's a little too late. The damage was already on film. Let me quickly mention the Super Thanks icon, which can be found underneath this video by clicking on the three dot drop down, put there for anyone who liked to show appreciation for videos like this, and thank you. In the aftermath, Celso goes to Selimaj's brother Nino and tells him his brother should recant the police report that he made, which he did at the time, out of fear. But what's most interesting is Romanello's take on all of this. He filed the motion to dismiss the charges against him. His second argument in support of his motion was vindictive prosecution. He claims the government indicted him on this case because in 2010, he refused to cooperate. And according to him, the FBI agents promised him he'd be arrested on an old gambling charge if he didn't become a cooperating witness. I have two points of view in my opinion. Let's say hypothetically this took place. He was told by the agents in 2010 that if he didn't cooperate, they were going to charge him with an old gambling case. The problem is this incident took place in 2017. And the FBI agents didn't make him go into the restaurant with cameras and assault the owner. Romanello, conversely, handed himself over to the agents on a silver platter by his own actions. But more crucially than that, his incompetent lawyer charges upwards to 150000 So do the math. To collect this debt and get caught on tape for an assault in the process, it cost him double the amount in legal fees with the possibility of going to prison. <laughs>